Hey guys, and welcome back to our Greg Tech New Horizons series. In the last episode, we managed to make some decent progress through Thalmcraft. I'm still trying to get used to these boots, they're way too fast. So there is still a few aesthetic upgrades I would like to do with the Thalmcraft area, but over the last few episodes, we have been doing a lot of Greg Tech, and this distillation tower is not happy. Hello? <laughs> yeah, for some reason, breaking the machine and replacing it fixed it. I don't know what was happening there. I think it was actually void in the outputs as well. But over the last few episodes, we have been doing a lot of Greg Tech progression. We're actually in a really, really good spot here. Things are fairly stable, I would say. We have a reliable fuel system. We have some decent power generation. We got lots of processing set up here, as well as some easy ways to make circuits. The thing we need at this stage is actually a really robust farm. And we have this old one here, which has been rebuilt twice. But I think it's time for the third rebuild. This time, hopefully for the last time, and we're going to do this in the void. Before we start this whole farming project though, I have been doing some more Thalmanomicon research, specifically for the Ender Chest and for the Enchantment Table. Oh wow, that opens up a lot of research. But this is the whole reason we got into Thalmcraft last episode, is because we lost our Fortune 3 book. We need blocks of Diamond Notch. Oh, it's just a Forge Molly block. But we are out of diamonds, is the only problem. Okay, uh, we'll save that for later then. <laughs> Do have some loot bags though. Absolutely useless. <laughs> So as I mentioned, we will be putting our crops here in the void dimension, and we could go chasing the biome specific buffs that we can get. You may remember this area here if you've been following the series for a while. That area was originally intended for all of, all of the crops, but if we need more crop growth, we can just spam more farms at this point in the game. So I've planned out space for two of these maximum size 37 by 37 IC2 crop farms here. If we need more, we'll put them on the right hand side and we'll just infinitely expand this way. I think we may also mix in some IC2 crop harvesters as well, since not everything needs to be in the IC2 farms. It's really all the tiny little things that you need to farm. Things that uh, it's really annoying to get your hands on otherwise. Another thing is we'll have to rethink our fertilizer supply. We used to get this from the distillation tower that sat here, but we are no longer producing fermented biomass. But that's a problem for after. First, we need a lot of dirt placed. And remember, we need to place dirt four blocks below the crops as well, just so that we can get the increased stats on the crops. And it's going to look something like this. So I moved it up into our void base and I've, I've actually put it in the air. Since if you're above Y128, then you get an air quality buff on the crops, I believe. I've also moved over our area for crop breeding. So we're still trying to breed the stick reed here. As you can see, we're up to 413.0. This has to get to 20.31.0. So it's going to take hours, like probably like two full days to get, <laughs> to get all of this. Then once we max the stick reed, we can breed that with all of the other seeds to give it their stats and then plant everything up there. So it's going to be a while before that's fully operational. But coming back to the issue of the fertilizer, well, I've decided to add another distillation tower and pyrolyze oven. I was debating on which way we'd, we would get this fertilizer. There is a few different res- in fact, there's more than a few. There's a lot of different recipes. <laughs> but honestly, I think the easiest one is just to do the fermented biomass again, like we were doing in the old base. So we get fermented biomass from the pyrolyze oven on biochaff and distill that down into fertilizer, along with all of these other byproducts, most of which we actually use as well. But as you can see, this isn't finished. We're waiting on a few things processing right now. But to get the distillation tower operational, we do need some more applied energistics channels. One question I do have though is, can we break the input side of our fluid P2P network? Since, you know, everything is on one fluid P2P, E27, and this has 22 outputs around the base. This was a really bad place to put this as well, <laughs> right on the main line, but I guess here goes nothing. Okay, give it a second to catch up. It's unlinked. Oh no. Oh no, I think all of these are broken now. Yep, E27 is dead. <laughs> oh no, look at all these things. Oh, they are every- how am I going to find 22 of these? Okay, I got all of them except one, and I think it's in the clean room if I remember right. Ah, yeah, we have the fluid P2P here to supply soldering and alloy and lubricant for this thing. Now we should see our 22 outputs. Okay, P fluid P2P has been fixed. I also added some dense cable here so that we can have more channels down the end of the line. And we'll add our 23rd fluid P2P right here. This is mainly just going to be for the outputs of the distillation tower. So I think we can actually just set this on insert since we're not going to be pulling anything from our network fluid wise. And same as we had on the old base and all the other distillation towers by now. We just place some super tanks, ignoring the water and CO2 gas since we're just going to let those things void. Everything else though we'll tank and use. We do need to supply this distillation tower with water, which again we just take from the reservoir. I would rather not take up the IO space on the fluid conduits, 
water we insert on blue, and I think we'll put the reservoir underneath just to keep things a bit cleaner, since we're running fluid conduit up here anyway. Oh, and this is two by two, you can't center this. <laughs> Okay, you should be filling with water, excellent. We need to also feed this pyrolyzed oven fermented biomass, which means we need to move these three machines right here from our old base. Over to our new base here. So we're, I don't know what we're gonna use for the input items. This can basically be any plant. We were using berries before and that seemed to work quite well. So we will hook up an interface and we'll decide later exactly what input items we'll have here. And we'll also have to think about power for these machines. So we have one HV machine, which unfortunately has to be in the middle, which is the macerating step. And then two LV on the side. We could either upgrade all of these to HV, but honestly, I don't think that's necessary. I think we're just going to do some transformer shenanigans <laughs> and try to get all this at powered. First of all, though, we move our connection for HV transformer back a bit. And we'll transform from EV to HV right here, since both of the multi-blocks run at HV. Let's also have a quick peek at our crops, I think we're fine. We don't want weeds basically growing right here. We need to check that thing like every 30 seconds. <laughs> Not every couple of minutes, but it helps that we have the travel anchor here and we can go basically anywhere else in our base. Wait a second, has the particles always been there on the macerators? It can't be anything new, I haven't updated the pack or anything, but uh, <laughs> that's very awesome. An EV line next to an MV line kind of scares me here, but they are died, so we should be safe enough. And this should give these power. Once the buffers fill, all these machines should turn on and we should get biochaff. Nice. Ah, uh, see, we have some weeds here. <laughs> I almost missed this one. I just went to check this. We're just missing our distillation controller multi-block. Quick round of maintenance. Set our filters on the distillation tower. And we should turn on here. Nice. All right, so we're now producing fertilizer. We need to turn this into the other type of fertilizer. This one apparently isn't good enough for the farm up there. <laughs> so we need a mixer, I believe. Yeah, mixer with appetite dust and water. Before we do that though, I'm gonna change the way that we're stopping this distillation tower. So on all the other ones, we're stopping it based on the fluid amounts. But I think right here, we want to control it based on the fertilizer amount. So what we can actually do is place a comparator output on this drawer. I think we'll need the redstone upgrade for this though, won't we? Yeah, the redstone upgrade, I think it is. Which will emit a redstone signal based on how full this is. We can make use of one of our Thomcraft dense red crystals. And we'll set this to a signal strength of, I think, 12 should do. So that's most of the drawer will be full before the redstone's allowed to pass through. And then instead of inverting the signal here, we can just invert the machine controller to be disabled with redstone. So that when there's a signal strength of 15 or the drawer fills up, the redstone will pass through and disable the distillation tower. So over here on the other side of the base, I just hooked up a really quick mixer here in order to make our fertilizer. All we need to do is plug in the interface. And this could have been a project we put off since we have still 1300 from our old base. I'd rather not come back to it. I'd rather it was just set up so that we could have this farm automatically running when we get the seeds. All we're now missing is, uh, is two storage buses actually. And we are very, very low on titanium now. Mm, only 24 ingots left. We're gonna have to do something about that sooner or later. But one of the storage buses is going to go on this fertilizer drawer. We can plug this in and we want this on 1000 priority. That will expose the fertilizer to our network and allow us to pull it into the farm up there. The other storage bus we want on this version of the fertilizer so that it can be pulled into the mixer over there. Right here. Also on 1000 priority. Pumpkins? Yeah, no thanks. Now that's the trouble with breeding these crops. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. You can get some like random crossbreeds between these two things, which is actually what these are here. It's just hemp and glowing earth coral, which I have no idea what it's used for. I'd rather keep it though, but we're after the stats on the stick weed for now. I think I also figured out the issue with the blinking multi-blocks. I had it happen over here with the pyrolyzer when we just added. And I think it's because our base wasn't chunk loaded, so there were some issues with power transforming from over there and making its way all the way to the end of the line. So I did have to edit some configs, I just thought I'd point that out, since config changes can be considered cheating. But yeah, all I really changed was the ability to load more chunks in the area. One other thing we can do to help our cause here is actually enable safe mode on all of these machine controllers. And what safe mode will do is permanently shut down the machine, no matter the state of the machine controller, if it runs out of power. So that means that we don't lo lose any more of the input fluids. I think a, a lot of our oil here got voided. But safe mode should make it safe. <laughs> So now we need to compile a list of crops we're going to have in this thing and what exactly we want to be farming, along with somehow getting the fertilizer up there as well. So I have been buying this glass cable like crazy. <laughs> Basically, anytime it becomes available in the, in the shop, I think it's a 40 minute cooldown. 
It could be 20 minutes, I don't remember, but yeah, there is a cooldown on being able to buy this stuff. In any case, we will have to run an applied energistics connection up there. We did unlock the ender chest recipe actually at the start of the episode, and we can now see that it's it's actually not surprising at all, look at this. <laughs> this is IV sensors, which I don't think we've made yet. Yeah, we don't have quantum stars. And we also need iridium to make these things, so we're not going to be able to get the ender chest soon. We also need 100v, which I don't think we can manage just yet. We need the next tier of wand. So we're going to just settle with a glass cable that goes all the way up to our farm there. And we're already out. We need like hundreds more to make it all the way up there. Before we start messing with the farm though, there's a few things we have to take care of. Like our lack of resources. <laughs> we have so many resources, just not the ones we need. This miner appears to be finished. We're gonna grab this. Oh, we actually have a bunch of ilmenite in here. Which we can turn into titanium. That's that's really nice. That's one of the resources we were really low on. So one of the miners is gonna be placed here in the Twilight Forest for a diamond vein. I've been saying for a while now, we desperately need some diamonds, even if it's just a tiny amount. And the other one we're gonna place here in the overworld for iron and gold. We are always, always in need of some more gold for the HV components. So I decided to go on a little demolition spree here in our old base, uh, just to reclaim some of the machines we had. It's looking pretty empty in here now. Almost every non-essential machine is now in this chest, and quite a lot of them as well. The HV stuff mainly is the ones I was looking for, but even just the chemical reactors, like look at them all. <laughs> and I did save all the seating. Some of it is still in the potent pipes, but uh, we have almost a tank and a half of this stuff. Anyways, I wanted most of these machines so that we can Throw them through this thing right here. no, this thing, the disassembler. And slowly, we can start to reclaim all the parts back. Alright, that is, um, that's only a few materials right there. It really puts it into perspective how, just how expensive everything is in this, look at that. And the majority of the expensive things even are still intact here in our new base. So the reason I wanted to reclaim some of these materials is we do need some more automation space over here. There's some assembler recipes we're missing, and also some bending machines for various circuit numbers. But first I think we're going to do some building over here with Thongcraft. This place is looking a bit ugly, along with the rest of our base. I mean, it's built in a way that we can easily make it nice, but <laughs> we just have to actually put in the work. So we're going to start over here at Thongcraft, and we're going to pick a completely different block palette. One of the spells we've unlocked in Thongcraft is the one focus for equal trade. I'm not sure exactly how we use this though. I think the quest mentioned something about the Focal Manipulator, which probably has research somewhere. Oh, actually, there's just a keybind for it. So we just need to collect some V. And let's say we want to swap the floor with the logs. I think we just right click. We need to also use this to correct a little mistake I made earlier on with this farm. This thing is complaining that there's no farmland since we don't have stone bricks in the bottom. So all of this Aegon needs to be stone brick. Okay, you should be happy now. Yeah, with our one sugar beet that we have planted. <laughs> so I crafted up this enhanced building guide, which gives us a guide, and we're gonna go with this sort of a shape. I quite like the idea of putting some sort of dome in here. Let's see how long this is gonna take though. I don't, as far as I know, there's not any way to print out these blocks, so to say, and automatically fill the spaces. So it's gonna be a lot of manual work, but um, hopefully it looks pretty cool when it's finished. You know, it's been a while since I've just sat down and been a bit creative in this game, and I think this has turned out quite well. So you guys suggested using purple for Thomcraft as a very, very fitting theme, so we went with two variants of purple here. We have some chiseled obsidian and some void stone. But yeah, it's more or less the same layout. I felt like it was a little bit dull and flat looking without the leaves, so... I don't know, I just threw in some leaves. <laughs> We also got some red carpet to cover up the quicksilver, which we need for stability. And in fact, we'll need a few more quicksilver, but I think we can just stack that below. It also definitely looks better without night vision. This is with night vision, it looks kind of all washed out, but it definitely looks better without night vision, gives it some of that uh, 
some of that darker ambience. Not a whole lot else has changed in here though, it's more or less the same setup, we just have space for our jars. We may add some extra rows on top here just to accommodate more Essentia storage. I also moved the research table over to the other side, and this may this chemical construct may end up getting moved as well, I'm not sure. It doesn't look amazing from the outside, all this stone brick, but <laughs> it doesn't look terrible, I don't think. So while I was building, I also did manage to get some more stats on the crops. We're up to 216-0, I think is our best one. Which I know doesn't sound... wait, 514-0. So yeah, we want these two to crossbreed here. I also just decided to plant some of the seeds we have. So we got some berries here, some bonsais, this glow flower which produces glowstone, and we got our sugar beet here, which is all just being stored in the drawers. And I think next episode we'll get on to processing these things. Some of these, for example, the sugar beet, we're going to need an extractor to extract the sugar. And same for like the glow flower, we need also an extractor for this for glowstone dust. I also noticed that we have some kind of issue here with applied energistics. And I really, really don't know what's causing it. Like basically this ended up full. There was like three stacks of titanium in here. And this vacuum freezer had turned off, so I hit it with the soft mallet. That was like a few hours ago. If we come over here, we should see like more than 60, 70 titanium here. It doesn't make any sense. Somehow it's being voided, and I don't know why. That may be how we're not, we don't have any titanium. <laughs> and it makes me wonder, like, what else is being voided here? I have no idea what is going on there. It might be the vacuum freezer and not applied energistics, but I have a feeling it's getting voided when it goes into this interface here. Just as a quick test and verification for the end of the episode, I'm going to put in a stack of tungsten steel. So we don't have any more tungsten steel ingots in here. I'm going to leave these in a chest. And we'll put the stack of tungsten steel dust through our blast furnace. Let's see if it all ends up in the applied energistic system before the end of this episode. Oh, is this the wrong circuit number? Oh yeah, it needs nitrogen. Okay, it's 125 seconds per ingot, but we'll see if we get it all back. <laughs> I'm going to be so, so sad if this... If it turns out this void base is uh, is void in items, that is really that is going to be really demoralizing. Anyways, moving on for today, I think we need some more machines here, as I mentioned. All right, so we're still going to be using the SMDs for a while to make circuits, and we have no way to automate these yet. We need an assembler with circuit three. There we go. I wonder how many of these machines we can just click out of our AE system with all the recycled materials now. And we kind of want to be keeping all the assemblers together, so this cutting machine is going to get moved. And our assembling machine will go here, interface below, output to the bottom, and allow input from output side. Assembler HV3PE is going to be this this guy's name. And we set the fluid input for polyethylene. And done. All we need now is a pattern for the interface. And we can make our SMDs. One for the resistors, one for the diodes, transistors, and capacitors. It looks like for whatever reason we also didn't set a filter here for silicon rubber. I think maybe because this was set up before we had silicon rubber set up. But we should have silicon rubber over here. Yeah, this tank right here. We also need at least one more bending machine. You can go right here. This guy is going to be on circuit 9. And we need 9 for the dense plates. Dense plates are used in things like the compressed chest, which we need to make lots and lots of with the diamonds we're going to collect. Hopefully that miner is finished by now. Our compressor here is also missing an interface. Let's fix that problem. Compressor HV, no circuit for this one. This autoclave we have here, we're going to keep with polyethylene inside. Only we need to give this an interface. And this thing we need to use to make raw carbon fibers with carbon dust. Oh, you know what? There's actually a recipe here for polytetrafluoroethylene, which gives us double the amount. Or epoxid, actually. Or polybenzimidazole, which gives us four times the amount, actually. I wonder if it's worth switching to these ones. Hmm. It's going to be easy enough to swap it out, but at least we have it here. We can always just rename it later on. I think we'll just keep it for polyethylene though, since we have the most of that stuff. And we'll also replace the cutting machine that we took from the other side. Hmm, we need also some more space in our wire mills, since all of our slots are filled up on the interface. And I know that there is the capacity card, but these take two 16k ME storage components each, plus an interface, plus an advanced card. So yeah, <laughs> these things are no joke at all. I think in that case we just add an, an extra wire mill and interface. Let's also make sure we plug things in. This is always a mistake I run into. I'm going to be requesting things and wondering why it's not working. Although we should double check our channel usage here. We're at 21, okay. So all these machines you can see here are all HV. And we do need some space for EV machines as there is some recipe requirements that we still want to do on demand. But we don't want to have machines set up <laughs> in the middle here. <laughs> 
This makes their heads tingle. So I shuffled some things around down here. This vanadium gallium line used to come in right around here. Instead, I just extended it along to the very middle of the room and apparently didn't plug this thing in. So that transforms from LUV to EV. And from here, we can just extend some platinum cable along. And I think we'll put our EV machines on this side of the room. Yeah, right, ar right along this wall, I think. Wait a second, this is, this is an IV line. Yeah, we're going LUV to IV. And I would also like to get some more batteries for this place. We also are missing two batteries on our main power output here. Right now, we only have two of these Lapatronic energy orbs. So effectively, we're actually only sending two amps of power throughout our base. Um, these are very, very expensive still though. But I mean, we do have our platinum set up, at least partially set up, and we have 300 platinum dust here. And that actually reminds me, we still don't have a furnace in our new base. Still Cooper Nickel Coils, and I think this guy's running an MV. Yeah, we got the double LV energy hatches on here. Let's, let's fix that problem. And we need a recipe for blue alloy wire. Forgot to rename this wire mill here. But yeah, this multi smelter, we upgrade its muffler hatch to EV. This will produce a little bit of pollution, but it, it's not like it's going to be running all the time. And we'll run the energy tier, I think it just the HV for now. We still don't have infinite power, I'm quite aware of our power situation. It's going to be something we'll have to upgrade probably before we do ore processing. I haven't really decided yet, but yeah, it's something we need to look at. So we need to extend along our IV line here, which is the platinum cable. Then we want IV to EV and EV to HV here, right? Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> okay, no explosions, that is good. All right, so now we can just hook up an interface to our multi smeller, and I think we'll actually move the output bus to the middle. Yeah, that way we can hide the conduit here and we can have another input bus on the, on the front side. So the finished contents of the multi smeller just come out of the output bus and back into our interface which, again, we have to plug in. I could have sworn we had more platinum as well. I think that might have be getting voided. <laughs> Although that might have been a power issue here before, before we had safe mode on all of these machines. At least I hope that's the case anyway. But we should be able to encode a recipe now for platinum dust to the platinum ingot. And this will go in our multi smelter interface. Does it work? Uh oh. So now we can start to work on another two of these Lapatronic energy orbs. And yeah, in the meantime, we can start to hook up our EV machines. I don't really know exactly how these are going to be set out yet or how many we're going to have. I've also started an IV line here, actually. At the moment, we only have the two IV machines, the assembling machine and the mixer, I believe. So these things we're just going to use manually for now. And same, I think, with the EV stuff, at least for the time being. We'll see just exactly what we need from this. So a couple of episodes ago, we did get these Samarium batteries, or was it Sanarium? Yeah, Sanarium batteries. We got these for IV, just over 25 million EU each. We might as well make use of them right here. Okay, now they're filling up, okay. <laughs> that did take a while, but I think it's just the internal buffer again. So that means we'll have to use at least 4x, oh no, we could get away with 2x platinum cable. But since the EU costs get pretty insane with the IV stuff and above, yeah, I think it's going to be good to have a battery buffer here. And same probably for the EV machines. We're currently making up some more Lapatron crystals here in our clean room, since we need these to engrave into the Lapatron chips, which are used for the energy orbs. But I think we'll save a few actually and just put them as a battery buffer on our EV machine wall. How many do we have? We have five. So yeah, we can probably just craft up a 4x battery buffer. So we'll move the transformer down a block and place the battery buffer above this thing. With the Lapatrons. This is going to drain so much energy from our buffer over there, since we're also filling the IV batteries here. This should be the last of our Lapatron chips that we need for the next two batteries. Need to laser engrave this thing. It kind of hurts so bad doing this. <laughs> it's like you're destroying items, but you're, you're not really destroying items. It's just one of those mechanics that feels terrible to do. Anyways, I do also want to just make sure that we can actually handle four amps out of this thing. So this is only a 1x cable, but Vanadium Gallium does handle a max amperage of 4, which means that I think we can put 4 batteries in our buffer here, and we won't have to change any of our power network as it currently stands. Two more Lapidronic Energy Orbs, which effectively doubles our main power storage here. Yeah, that's going to take a while to fill up. <laughs> it's probably going to eat quite a lot of fuel out of our uh, high octane gasoline there. Speaking of our fuel, actually, since we now have run out of oil, I think because it all got voided, Let's uh, replace our ender tank here. 
and we'll fly out and re-enable our oil drill, which still should have some left over here, about 400 blocks from our old base. Plug in the ender tank, and we give it a refuel, which I only brought the empty cells. <laughs> oh, I'm going crazy here. Okay, now, now we're making more oil. So now the only other input for our fuel system here for high octane gasoline is logs to these two distillation towers, or the two pyrolyze ovens here. Until this point, we've just been manually feeding these. But since we now have, I mean, very few crops, and they're terrible stats, but <laughs> at least it's some passive wood generation here in our new base. That is automatically fed from the, the farm hatch underneath into the drawer controller here. And I also hooked up the storage bus and connected this all the way down to our AE system. Which means that we can hook up some interfaces here on the pyrolyze ovens. If both of them are requesting oak logs, it should more or less round robin these things. Assuming both of these pyrolyze ovens are the same speed, which in theory they should be. I think they're both running the same coils and energy tier. And we can just hook this up with some conduit here. I absolutely adore ME conduit. It's it's awesome. <laughs> just Ender IO in general, I would say, actually. Wait, we should be good for channels here, right? Yeah, we're plenty of channels over this side. We'll hide them both from the terminal. I don't really know why I named it, just for consistency, I guess. But yeah, we should now be producing all of these byproducts passively, fully passively now, and a lot more pollution. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of pollution now. So yeah, really all we have to worry about with our fuel system now is the oil, which I mean effectively is infinite, it just means that we have to move the oil rig every now and then. But I think we're going to wrap things up here, we got quite a lot done today, especially over here at Thumbcraft area. We also got the start of our farming area here in the void, which I think next episode will be expanded on. We'll have to set up a dedicated machine room for a lot of these things, and also obtain the rest of the seeds. I'm curious though on our little experiment with the tungsten steel. Oh, we did get it all. Hmm. Well, I'm really happy to see that, but I, I'm still confused about our titanium. <laughs> I wonder if it was something to do with the chunk loading, or maybe it was something to do with power here. I'm not sure. If you guys have any ideas, leave it in the comments. But that is going to do us for today, so thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.